Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a cardiologist and today I wanted to do a little video on uh, one of my um, uh, one of my favorite sub subjects which is ectopic heartbeats um, and really I wanted to talk to you about how you go about conquering your ectopic heartbeats. I have spoken to a ton of people um, since I put my videos out on YouTube I got some great feedback and a lot of people contacted me and they said look you know we want to talk to you about our ectopic heartbeats they're really uh, you know, they've um, uh, had a really bad impact on our lives. We're always worried about them. Um, we're always worrying that something bad's going to happen to us. We just hate the thought of having them. Uh, I can have a completely good day, and then next day, for no reason, they come on, and it spoils my whole day. And um, what do you do about them? Um, now, just so people understand what I mean by ectopic heartbeats, it is um, this kind of thing where your um, your heart should beat like this, okay? But with ectopic beats, you could be sitting there for no reason. This is what happens, and then you feel oop, nothing, and then you get a thud, and then thud, and then you go back, okay? And or sometimes you can get this kind of thing, you know, normal, normal, normal. And some people get, you know, a double beat, some people get missed beats. But in essence, what it is, is a short-lived period uh, between normal beats where the heart uh, flutters or misses beats or has extra beats. Okay, now, um, if you're getting this for more than 30 seconds, i.e. you're getting... Um, completely irregular beats for more than 30 seconds, then it's not probably not ectopic heartbeats. But if you're getting two or three, and then two or three normal beats, two or three, two or three normal beats, then that's still called ectopic beats. So it's just important to bear in mind that not all ectopic beats follow the same pattern. It really depends on where the ectopic beat is coming from, whether you're getting two in a row, whether you're getting three in a row, etc. But in essence, um, I speak to a lot of people who uh, say to me, look, the ectopic beats, A, I'm worried about what they may signify, B, I just don't like having them because they make me feel uncomfortable. Um, and I often uh, try and explain to them a few things, okay? The first thing to say is that if I went out onto the street and I called a hundred people. I called all the people on the street and said, look, I need hundred such people who have no symptom at all from their heart, who are leading normal lives, who are not conscious of their heart at all and are happy as Larry. And I took hundred such people and I put a halter monitor on them. 60 or 70 will, of them will have an ectopic or more than, you know, one ectopic or more than one ectopic on the halter. So having ectopics is not abnormal. Um, out of 100 people, 70 will have some ectopics, okay? But these are 100 people who do not feel a thing. So 70 of them will probably have ectopic beats when you look at the monitor, but they are not feeling those ectopic beats, all right? Um, so having ectopic beats is not abnormal. Feeling them is. Of course, there are some people who are getting a lot of ectopics, okay? So more than 10,000 or 15,000 a day. In that case, there may be something else going on which is causing those ectopic beats. But in general, having ectopic beats, and, and I actually know people who are having 20,000 ectopics and they don't feel them at all. So there is a, there are two aspects to this. One, why are you feeling them? Two, are you getting more than what would be normal for the average population? Um, and when I've I've spoken to a lot of people, uh, the first thing I've uh, found, if you if there was one common theme underpinning everything, you know, when you're talking to a lot of people, you're trying to work out in your own mind what is the one common thing that I that links all these people. The majority of times, I found that those people. Who talk to me about their hearts and their ectopics and the fact that their ectopics have been bothering them have some element of anxiety about their health either something bad has happened to them in the past or something bad has happened to a loved one um, but they have some 
degree of health-related anxiety. So that's the one common thing I've found amongst a lot of people who um, suffer from ectopics, okay? Uh, the second thing to say is when it comes to um, um, length of life, all right? When it comes to length of life, it is not as much about the ectopics or the nature of the ectopics that dictates you know your length of life but more so who you are okay so if you're a 80 year old person who's had five heart attacks in the past who's had a bypass operation who's got bad lungs then your ectopics are more worrisome than if you're a 30 year old person who has no medical problems okay so it's not the nature of the ectopics that worries people that worries doctors it's the person that you are who are you are you someone who is in bad health are you someone who has had lots of problems or heart attacks with the, uh, your, or who's been born with a bad heart or are you actually someone who is otherwise well if you're someone who is otherwise well who is a healthy person who's just getting the ectopic your prognosis by very nature of the person who you are is much better than a person who is uh, who has lots of long-term chronic conditions okay so that should reassure a lot of people that actually if you're otherwise young fit healthy do everything the ectopics are not going to play a major role in terms of affecting your length of life of course if your symptoms become really bothersome it is important to get checked out it is important to have an echocardiogram so that you know that you have a structurally normal heart that nothing was you know that you weren't born with a heart condition or anything like that and it's always nice to have a halter monitor or some kind of monitoring so that you know that what you're getting are definitely ectopic beats okay um, but that is where it comes down to your length of life all right if you have a structurally normal heart and you are otherwise in good health and you don't have a family history of someone dropping down dead suddenly, the ectopics are not going to make a significant impact on your length of life. Your risks of having a major problem with the ectopics are pretty well much the same as being on the road and being hit by a car, okay? Vanishingly low, all right? Then there is the issue of why you get them for for a lot of people the 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 worry is that they they get the ectopics and then they can't get rid of them and that makes them very concerned it's a fear that the ectopics generate and for them i say this okay the you know i tell them a story and sometimes that helps when i my my son um when he was a very little boy um he was we were walking along and he went to a beach and on the beach there was a dog uh, that he saw from the distance now he was so small and the first thing that happened is he saw the dog and the dog started running towards him and my son uh, thought that this dog was going to harm him and therefore started running as soon as he started running the dog started chasing him and as the dog chased him you know he 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 ran and he started getting more and more terrified and he cried and eventually we got there and the dog didn't really mean any harm the dog was just being friendly but there was my son didn't know this and therefore he was terrified anyway that was a really bad experience for him um, and then what we started discovering is that slowly and gradually he started developing a real phobia for dogs so he would uh, he would he would um, initially see a dog from uh, a distance he would start crying he would his would go sweaty you could feel his heart beating he would be terrified Eventually, he stopped going to the beach because he was so worried that he would see a dog that even the thought of going to the beach was so unappealing to him, all right? And increasingly, the effects of just knowing that there was a dog in the area would be terrifying for him. Having said that, the dog had never really done him any harm. It was just the thought, the fear of what the dog could do, and the fear of the unknown which caused him all these symptoms without actually anything bad happening to him he was manifesting symptoms of sweaty palms of a heart fast heart rate of a dry mouth you know terrified and then eventually the thing to do was we had to get him back and um, reintroduce him to dogs because at the end of the day he couldn't leave lead his life 
being fearful of dogs. So eventually there was a time that we had to get him to confront a dog and he was terrified. But soon he realized that the dog didn't mean him any harm. And once he started realizing that the dog didn't mean him any harm, he stopped getting scared of dogs. And because he stops getting scared of dogs, all those symptoms that he was being manif that he was manifesting disappeared. And now he's very well adjusted, not scared of dogs. In fact, we have a dog and um, he's fine. So ectopic beats are like this, okay? Ectopic beats are like that dog. Um, you're fearful of it because you don't know what it means, okay? And the more you worry about it, the more fear it generates. There are several things that happen when you have fear because you are worried about these ectopic beats and what they could signify. Number one, um, what does fear do? Fear lowers your threshold for picking things up, all right? You get into this flight or fright response. If you're watching a scary movie, for example, and you, you feel fear, you will notice how quickly you jump. You know, you could be watching a scary movie and if the bell rings, you would jump. Having said that, if you're busy and you're not watching a scary movie, you don't think twice when the bell rings. Why this discrepancy? The discrepancy between the, the same stimulus, the same bell ring. If it's a busy day, you've got your kids at home, you're running around, the bell rings, doesn't cause anything. The same tone, the same intensity, but if you're fearful and you're watching a scary movie in the middle of the night, that would stimulate a completely different reaction to your body, in your body. And that is the whole thing about fear. It generates, it lowers your threshold for picking things up, all right? It makes you far more aware. It causes changes in, within your body for the same stimulus that to a certain extent um, in another person doesn't cause anything. So if I have an ectopic and I'm not fearful, I may not notice anything. I may not even notice an ectopic. Whereas if you're someone who is fearful, you will notice it a lot more. That's the first thing. The second thing is when you get fearful, um, you can start hyperventilating. Okay, so when you're developing, when you're fearful, when you're worried about what's going on, you start hyperventilating. When you start hyperventilating, what happens is, you change the ionic balance within the bloodstream. And a lot of people, when they hyperventilate, they get tingling in their hands because their calcium levels and their magnesium levels change. And then remember, things like magnesium um, do have an electrical impact on the heart. And a relative magnesium deficiency just caused by hyperventilating can cause more ectopics to happen, okay? So that's the other thing, that if, if you become fearful, not only do you notice those ectopics that are there, but you also generate more ectopics. And therefore, um, and that is why, you know, calming down, and once you calm down, the ectopics slowly go away. Um, the third thing to say is that, um, so, there, so we've talked about the fact that it lowers your threshold. Number two, um, when you become fearful, um, your, your ectopics can increase. Number three, um, fear is also incredibly inflammatory. Fear is a stress hormone. If, sorry, fear it brings about stress. It causes the release of things like cortisol and adrenaline. So your heart will beat faster. You're, you are going to be more irritable. And it is very inflammatory to the body. And that is another reason why ectopics come about and why people get so many ectopics. So it is really, really important to develop strategies by which you can conquer your fear. I promise you, if you've been checked out, if you have a structurally normal heart, if you don't have any family history of heart disease, all right, then your problem is your fear. And your fear is not um, necessarily justified if you've been checked out, your risks of something bad happening to you are pretty well much the same as someone crossing the road uh, and being hit by a car. Doesn't mean it will never happen. Doesn't mean that, you know, you won't hear of the isolated incident of a person collapsing and dying, but those are isolated incidents. You hear them because they, 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 are, they are newsworthy but the majority of people are fine. And certainly in my own experience, wherever I've had young people uh, who come to me, 
you know, after a little bit of reassurance, their palpitations miraculously go away. But they don't go away completely. They come back again at times of fear, at times of stress. And once you start conquering your fear and you realize that your problem is not your ectopic beats, okay? It is the fear that they're associated with, the fear that something is wrong, the fear that maybe this time it's different, the fear that has someone missed anything. And I promise you that the majority of ectopics are generally benign. If you are otherwise healthy, it's as good as it gets. So I wouldn't worry about the ectopics. Um, I've spoken to, I spoke to a lady who said, you know, she had three children and her oldest one was, I think, 16 years old. And she said, um, you know, I've had these ectopics for 25 years and they've destroyed my life. And I said, well, you've known these ectopics longer than you've known your own children. All right. So why are you so fearful of them? You know, these ectopics have been your friend. Um, the minute you start welcoming these ectopics, the minute you start saying, actually, I'm not fearful of you because you've been with me so long and I have not come to any harm. I know you don't mean anything bad. The minute you start thinking like that, those ectopics will go away. Okay, I promise you, they will go away. But you have to, but there has to be a change in mindset. You have to stop being fearful. Those ectopics are like the dog that was terrorizing my child. Um, but the day my son started accepting him, started thinking of it as a friend, the dog didn't bother him anymore. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, a little bit different to what I normally do. Uh, but I do think that, you know, sometimes I go through the Facebook pages, the forums, and so many people are so fearful of all the bad things that can happen. I promise you, from the heart perspective, then those bad things are not going to happen, all right? You should get checked out. You should have a doctor that you can trust. Uh, and as long as you have confidence in your doctor and your doctor does your tests and tells you that your heart is fine, don't worry, you're going to be fine. All right. So I hope this was useful. And um, uh, you can contact me on, uh, this is my name, Sanjay Gupta. Uh, this is my website, yourcardiology.co.uk. And this is my Facebook page. So uh, thank you so much for listening. Take care. Bye.